Hi guys, sorry I'm a bit late on the video tonight. I'm having real issues with my wobbly stand, so I hope my head doesn't look too wobbly this evening. Anyway, um, bear with me. Let's just get rid of that. So tonight, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how you can reboot your career, because I've had a lot of inquiries this week from people that are um, undergoing changes of how they um, construct their career because of changes in regulations that the government's bringing in about those that are self-employed. Um, so that's causing people to think, well, hang on a minute, how do I work in a different way um, than I have done before? So lots of inquiries on that. And also lots of people kind of saying, you know, I've come back, I've, I've got back into the, the month of January and things haven't really changed for me. So what do I do about my career? And I'm really not getting the recognition that I deserve. So this is a, just a short video tonight, just about how to reboot your career and where to start. Because it can be difficult, well, you know, with, with any change in our lives, it's very difficult to see the wood for the trees. And sometimes that's why, why we need extra help, why we might need a coach or a mentor to really help us sort of hide highlight those bits that we can't see because we're too close to them and you know don't worry about it if you're sitting in a job and, and you're like oh gosh this time I mean I've been there don't believe me that I've been there where I sat there thinking do you know what I'm still in the same place I haven't moved on um, I'm not very happy in my role so what do I do so it's perfectly normal to feel like that from time to time it's just that if it's a consistent feeling then it is really time to think about hang on a minute, I need to get out. Now, whether that's the content of your role, whether it's about the culture or the people that you work with, it's not challenging enough, whatever it is, we all need a reboot at times. You know, we're working, as I keep saying, we're working longer, we're working longer in our lives, we've got greater demands on us. So it's really important for us to be happy at work. You know, it's a different world where, you know, we stayed in a job for life. That just doesn't doesn't exist anymore. And quite often that's not really seen as a healthy thing to do anyway. Companies like to see that you've changed and evolved. So we all need to reboot at times. So I think the first place to start in is like, what is the reason behind your slump? And that might be something really obvious or it might be, do you know what, I just cannot put my finger on it. So if you're feeling a bit meh, then what is that actually about? Is it that you are working in a toxic in toxic environment um, it's really interesting you know I'm based in the UK and um, when you read stuff on LinkedIn you'd like to think we have a population of very very enlightened and educated managers but um, having spoken to at least three people this week it seems pretty clear that they've been working in toxic cultures where there's been bullying behaviors where they've been ignored excluded their workload keeps changing so those are classified as bullying behaviours and need to be brought to the attention of your manager or your HR person. And if you are feeling like that, then that's your choice as to whether you bring those up in a, in a constructive way with your HR manager or just say, do you know what, I've just had enough. You know, I'm not putting up with this. And um, quite a few of my clients have done that or they are seeking advice from mentors, coaches and thinking about where else, how else do I get around the career, um, career progression that I want. So if it's a toxic culture, I definitely recommend, I always recommend tackling that first because it's not good for our mental health and well-being. So identify what the reason is for the slump. Is it that you are being overlooked? Is it that you are, and this isn't to say being a victim, is it that you don't quite have the right skills for your next move or a sideways move? Is it because there's been changes in the organisation and you feel comfortable? And just recognise whether it's something inside of yourself that you can change. Now, I would argue there's usually quite a lot within ourselves we can change. Is it within you or is it something external in the environment that's really sort of getting you down and really try and identify well you know ask yourself these questions ask it before you go to bed and see what comes up overnight as in you know what is behind this feeling um, if it is that you're struggling to deal with a change or um, an office move or something decide whether that means you want to leave or whether you might need some help on dealing with change we all deal with change I've had quite a big change this week um, and even though I've got all the tools in the toolbox you know I did allow myself some time to sit there and think how do I feel about this change? I'm not sure I feel that kind of comfortable with it. I wasn't hard on myself, but I just sat there, worked through it, didn't push it away, but kind of took the information that that feeling was give, giving me, neutralised it and thought, right, okay, what can I do about this? What can I do about this? And then within, you know, a matter of hours or a day, I'm feeling much better because I'm not sitting there ruminating. It's okay to reflect, but let's not ruminate like child, a cow's chewing the cud, so to speak. 
So what is it? Lack of motivation, focus, toxic work, work environment, no promotion, being overlooked. Is it something you can con influence, stroke control, or is it out of your control? And that's going to make a sort of help you make a big decision about what your next move may or may not be. Um, and sometimes we can really worry that our boss might notice that um, we're not quite as pr productive, but um, try not to worry about that too much because the more that we worry about things in a, in a funny way, the more that we create those, those situations to worry about. So just go in, do what you can, obviously perform you know, as best as you can, but try not to get obsessed about the fact that just because you know what's going on inside here or here at, or both, that your boss might notice they may do and that may well open up to really like constructive conversation that you can prepare for and prepare your points to say look this is how I'm feeling so um, you might be a little bit worried about that so just be mindful of that but don't really get paranoid about it so let's think about this we label po uh, feelings sometimes as positive or negative perhaps we can neutralize that and say this is just a feeling and a feeling is giving me information so hang on a minute okay yeah i'm not feeling that good about this um so what information is this this feeling giving me and can i use it as an opportunity to reboot myself and my career and then Try something simple like what can you do? What one thing you can do every day to improve your situation and ask yourself some of these questions. Is it that you know you've identified what it might be about? Um, you've reframed it as uh, this feeling is giving you information, neither good nor bad. I mean, obviously, you're going to feel a certain way, but try not to like really get into that victim mindset because it's just repelling to other people and you bring that energy to the workforce that, that people don't really, really like. But um, think about it, you know, every situation is completely unique. And here's just some things that come up for my clients. Talked about the toxic workplace, talked about, you know, lack of promotion or being overlooked. That may be something that you can change within yourself. I do a lot of coaching with execs, male and female, that want to create more visual, verbal and communications impact. So that's really, really important sometimes. You might be really great at your job. You might just be a little skill set that you need to address. Right, do you need a break? Are you simply burnt out? Have you been working all the hours, working really hard on a project? Or you just feel like, do you know what? I know it's only January. Well, hang on, it's February, but I need a break already. So have a think about giving yourself a break. We do work longer sometimes in terms of years, sometimes in terms of hours, sometimes we're traveling a lot. So we do need to recharge our batteries because burnout happens over time. It's like a candle wick burning. Um, and sometimes we don't notice it until it's a little bit too late. So think about the fact that your career is very much a part of you. You know, it's it's... When it's working really well, it's like relationships. It really supports our goals in other areas of our lives, like finance, children, balance, all of that. So unhappiness can really upset the apple cart across our lives. Remember, it's never too, too late to change and adapt what you do and reboot what you do. So I use these words, re regroup, reboot, and reinvent, the three R's. So regroup, think about the things I've asked you tonight. Uh, really go into like what, what's going on, is it something I can change, is it something external of me that's the environment, regroup and then reinvent, create a plan for action. And this is about being your own leader, self-leadership, inside-out leadership, leadership from the inside out, and it comes from how you deal with things that might feel a bit negative, but remember those feelings are just information, let's not over-label them. It comes from your actions and how you react to challenges. And these are the biggest growth spurts that I see in people when you really go, do you know what? Uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Right, let's do something different. Let's take action. That is where people really see momentum in their goals and their careers. So it's never too late. It's never too late to be your own leader, leading from the inside out, not always from outside in, okay? So we all need to feel appreciated and supported in our roles. Do you feel supported and appreciated? Are you getting recognised for what, you, what, what you've done? If not, what can you do? Um, can you speak to your line manager about that? Can you ask him, what does it take to get this particular grade in my performance review? I've been marked, at, for example, a B for many, many you know, months. I want to get to the next level. Where is the gap? Where is the gap? What skills do I need to... Um, what skills and talents do I, and attributes do I need to furnish within myself to get me to that to ne next level? Ask the questions. Don't be scared to ask the questions. Don't sort of hide away and feel like you're the victim of a, a situation you can't control. There's much you can influence and much you can control.
okay, if it's been going on for a long time, I'd always recommend getting help from a coach, a, a buddy, a mentor. I'd be careful, or even a mastermind group. I chaired one for the Institute of Directors last night and we were brainstorming different ideas just to get it off our chests because we need to talk, we need social connection to really talk about what's going on in our lives. Now, sometimes our friends and family can be a little bit biased, so you might want to be careful of that. But somebody that can really professionally help you, ask, um, ask the right questions, um, help you with the right tools and techniques to unlock what's going on in your, your mindset at the moment. And when is the last time you dusted off your career plan and, and worked on some goals day by day? I think many of us just sometimes can expect, well, why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? It's because we're not planning for it. So when was the last time you looked at your career plan? When was the last time you really thought, I need to dust that off and look at my goals? When was the last time you built new relationships at work that may uncover new opportunities? When is it that you did something social with your buddies or your friends at work? When was the last time you looked at your career skills and did a career audit about the skills you have, the skills you want, and how you're going to close that gap? Um, you know, moves within an organisation can be upward, sideways. It can be acquiring a new skill this way rather than going up that way. Um, I see that all the time, especially in matrix global organisations. What classes or skills can you learn? What classes can you take that's going to help you? Or it might be, you know, do you know what? I just need to take a sabbatical. A friend of mine's just taken a year off to write a book. You know, they've been working hard. He's been working hard, really hard, you know, really, really hard for years and years. Been there a long time. And now it's like, nope, you know. And, you know, is it that things in your outside world have changed? Your kids have, you know, they're going to school or they're going to university. They're flying the nest. And you've got more time to think about what you want. So... Um, as I say, as I mentioned tonight, it's a very quick video tonight, but I just wanted to give you some of the reasons that might be behind your need to reboot um, your career. So I call it regrouping, rebooting and reinventing, three stages. So it can be, yes, if the, to the culture is toxic, you need to address that. There might be some weird bullying behaviours going on, but if not, what can you do for yourself? How can you lead your career from the inside out rather than thinking, well, come on, guys, what's happening here? Think about skills, think about relationships, think about extra projects, or think about, I need to take a break, I need to manage my hours, I need to think about my career plan, I haven't thought about it for a long, long time. So those are just a few different ideas that you can play with, because no one one size career reinvention fits all. I know I've been through a few myself, and I know I'm talking to people about this at the moment who have come back to work full of optimism after a rest and thought, you know what, nothing has really, really changed. So I hope this gives you a few tips and a few pointers of how you might start dusting off that career plan and taking steps forward for yourself. Okay, have a good evening. Bye.